rest area. My earliest childhood memories are of mom and dad fighting about money. When I say earliest memories, I'm guessing I was about three. So my little sister would have been two and my older brother about four and a half. Dad was usually drunk and mom would be angry that dad's poor choices had burned through what little money we had. At some point in the argument, dad would have, would have had enough of it. And that's when he would put the three of us in the car and off we would go with him, drunk behind the wheel. He did this to punish mom because he knew she would be scared and worried about us until we got back home. That happened frequently. On one particular occasion, I don't know how far dad drove or how long the trip took, but I remember we were all scared. Even though we were very young, we knew what he was doing was dangerous. He was crossing the center line on the highway and the speedometer kept creeping up. We were all relieved when dad finally pulled into a rest area and passed out on the ground next to the car. Not knowing what else to do, we got out of the car and played in the rest area all night in the blue-green gl glow of the mercury vapor lights. We were totally at the mercy of the universe while dad slept it off, but we were undoubtedly safer, safer there than in the car with him behind the wheel. Today, I reflect on that experience with a bit of amazement, and perhaps that explains my fascination with rest areas. I talk about them frequently because, in a way, they feel like home. That night, it was an oasis of light that made us feel safe. Everyone had a place in the light away from the darkness. We didn't have to be rich. All we had to do was show up and we had access to everything the rest area had to offer. The idea that rest areas were places where families came to have picnics also intrigued me because that's not how it worked in my family. But I wanted that for myself, and I wanted it for my kids when I became an adult. When I left home, I was determined to have the normal life I dreamed of as a child. One thing I learned from my parents' endless fighting was that your relationship with your spouse determines the kind of life you build to an enormous degree. How you interact and treat one another means everything. It seems pretty obvious to say that a marriage filled with love and mutual respect will be happier than one filled with animosity. But it's not always as obvious that your kids are looking at that relationship to learn how to treat a spouse. They're learning what love is, what parenting is, and they are learning all of that from you. So the foundation of building a great life comes from the person you choose to marry. We have to teach our children that this is one of the most, if not the most, important decisions they will make in their lives. We have to teach our children that even if they find the perfect person, marriage will still take a lot of work. A successful marriage takes commitment. It takes two people saying, we are not going to stop. No matter what, we won't stop. We'll work together until we figure this out. That's what couples need to strive for as they build a life together. Growing up without a strong role model to show me the example was hard. Here's the thing. You have to know when somebody goes through life like that. It doesn't just go away. Don't you wish you could just wash it off and it would be gone? It's dangerous to think you can do that because it will come back to bite you in your weak moments. So you have to be constantly vigilant to avoid the habits and behavior patterns that are seared into your psyche. You have to embrace what's been done to you. You have to intentionally turn it into something good. And that's what I'm trying to do by sharing my story. I want to take these crazy things and turn them into some lessons that someone can use because I don't want all of that pain to be wasted. I thank God that I found my wife and somehow she chose to stay with me through the good and the bad. We shared the same commitment to our relationship, so we persevered. With her help, I am becoming the man I was meant to be. Developing that special relationship has been the key to building my own personal rest area.